This is going to be a list of book suggestions to all newcomers to the world of paganism, occultism, witchcraft, and anyone who's experiencing a spiritual awakening of any kind. I remember how much I suddenly craved when I had the beginnings of mine, since that's still going on. When we awaken, we don't just have a moment of arriving somewhere and then that's it, we're done. No, it goes on. And that's the best part. So these suggestions are for you. This video is dedicated to the incomparable Ms. Jessie Weston, who published a book 100 years prior to the filming of this video that you're now watching. Her book, From Ritual to Romance, went on to become a standard of its subject beyond her own years, and you'll find out a lot about that. We're going to get into that one. So as I speak, I'm going to cut away to the particular book I'm talking about and show you the covers and perhaps some introductory pages too, or varying editions, etc., depending how much there is to see for each beyond text. Okay, let's begin. The Underground Stream by Christine Payne Towler. I mention this first because it is the one I suggest to all who wish to study tarot, whether beginner or advanced student of the mysteries. It looks too thin for all that it actually contains. It explains the whole system of tarot while also exploring its known history, including the many other occult systems that fed into it, as well as offering the author's speculations. She remains clear throughout as to what is factual and known history and what possibilities are likely to be true. She shares imagery from varying decks and discusses some key switches certain creators have made in their own decks. This I recommend first and foremost, even above the next far older book. The Book of Toth by Aleister Crowley. Forget what you know or have heard about the man himself. His written works are genius, particularly this one. Consider the tarot's Wheel of Fortune. It's to be turned like the cards of the deck themselves, to be seen and grasped from multiple angles at different times. Understanding tarot is like reading a long poem that you know ahead of time has countless layers of meaning and that you would need to read through it many, many times. He's not trying intentionally to be abstruse with contrived mystical talk. He's conveying meaning beyond logically constructed sentences which commonly need that structure to be understood. With tarot, it's not quite as simple as... This card carries this meaning, and that's all there is to it, though many would argue that point to the contrary. This book acts much like Fulcanelli's Mystery of the Cathedrals, in that when you read it, it's more like having a conversation, and there's historical facts mixed with numerological and mythological patterns and equations that work better being absorbed by your subconscious mind. There really is so, so, so very much embedded in these cards and their history that no student can ever fully graduate. There's always more to learn. There always will be, and Crowley reveals that here. Tarot of the Magicians by Oswald Wirth. Oswald Wirth created his own tarot deck in the late 19th century, which was ahead of its time, being the go-to deck, aside from the then most popular French decks, all before Pamela Coleman-Smith gave us what today may be the most popular and common deck, the Rider-Waite-Smith deck. Among his students was Pierre de la Cynic, creator of one of my personal favorite decks, due to its equal parts creativity and holding true to the original actual meanings and patterns, which is called La Cynicov Tarot. And that can be seen in my rare Tarot decks video. 
De La Sonic went on to teach the methods of his mentor, Oswald Wirth, and many today consider his to be the finest design with most ideal numerical and astrological associations. He lays out the known history of the tarot. You're going to find disagreement wherever you go about this subject, so the best thing to do is go to the oldest, follow their evolution through time and place, then look back and see how you feel about what needs to remain traditional, what else needs changing or adapting as more knowledge is gained collectively. By the way, I suggest his tarot deck as well, though you do not need one to follow what he's doing in his book. The books related to uh, both history and mythology that we're about to cover, most of these include highlights on history that been covered up by either the church or other political powers. A History of Pagan Europe by Prudence Jones and Nigel Pennick. First published, 1995. Folks, the title says it all. Just keep in mind that so many churches throughout Europe and Asia Minor are built over ancient sacred sites when beginning to read this book. It is perhaps a perfect starting point for discovering the traditions of scattered European cultures before and during all the church-mandated conversions and murder. This is the perfect way to set some groundwork for yourself in your, in your studies about history related to magic and witchcraft. The Serpent and the Goddess by Mary Condren, first published in 1989. This is a wonderful starting point for anyone wanting to see how Celtic tradition was subsumed into Christianity and ancient goddesses and historical women were given a makeover to become Catholic saints. It's that simple, and I love that her thesis remains that simple and tight throughout. The Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manley Palmer Hall. This is also a wonderful starting point for those looking to piece together history's puzzle and seeing astrotheology at the heart of all major religions. This gets highest of recommendations, being from a man who had a lifelong obsession with history and mythology and understood the great mysteries and gave free talks to anyone who would come and hear, much like Alan Watts, who we'll get to later. The Mystical Kabbalah by Dion Fortune. This requires some serious focus to understand the relationship between tarot, the human chakra system, and the tree of knowledge with their ten spheres of influence. Her two novels I'm going to throw into the mix here too. The Sea Priestess and Moon Magic are relatively much lighter reading relatively. The author has stated that she is initiating the reader into the sacred mysteries through these stories. If you choose to start your reading material relative to newly arriving into paganism, occultism, witchcraft, or just an unnamed and unnameable spiritual awakening with novels that tell stories rather than information collections, please start here with The Sea Priestess and then moon magic. By writing these books, Ms. Fortune is enacting the rites of the priestess, and you, dear reader, are that of the initiate. The Druids by Peter Beresford Ellis. There is so much that is sadly lost about the Druids, which we can be absolutely certain about. Much of what we are told comes from Julius Caesar, who spoke of them with condescension, as Rome needed the Druids to appear to posterity as enemies with themselves cast as necessary heroes. Ellis in this book traces what we do know about them and through research and understanding conveys to us sincere speculation of what is probably true about them which we simply have no proof of, thanks again to the Romans.
From Ritual to Romance by Jesse Weston Published in 1920 This author amazes me with her grasp of the mysteries and the connections she draws between the Holy Grail legends and the Bible and other cultural strains, showing that the Grail is a blend of pagan and Christian elements. You, my viewers, know the broad spectrum of subjects I cover on my channel and that I take a syncretic approach to their study where we look at them all together. That's what this woman did exactly 100 years ago with this book, obviously long before the internet. Now, I say that she's missing some crucial elements to the whole vast story, but that's nothing to hold against her. She was writing at a time when very often authors wrote with a Christian perspective, even if they did not intend to. But for what she does have available to her at the time, she pulls together quite naturally many elements that were forced apart, let's say, by the powers that be. And she certainly paved the way for future research and broke new ground, all of which occurred at a time when that was extremely rare for a woman to achieve, which is why this video is dedicated to her. Just as a side note, T.S. Eliot wrote an epic poem inspired by Ms. Weston's book. You can also see it briefly in the movie Apocalypse Now beside Marlon Brando. It is truly a landmark of anthropological and mythological scholarship. The Golden Bough by James George Frazier Published in 1890 This is considered a classic all over the world. It's a really big book. I suggest finding the unabridged version. Very simply, its intention is to convey the spirit of every known culture in the world. That is, part anthropology with descriptions of spiritual traditions and cultural activities, and part mythology, telling the myths that each respective culture tells each other. This book set the standard for many others, including Jesse Weston being among her inspirations for the last book we just covered. The Hero with a Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell You can find uh, my own reading of highlights from this book elsewhere on my channel. And I feel it's important for authors and would-be authors, or even artists of any kind. It shows how the same basic heroic story is told in all cultures throughout time. Mr. Campbell is among my own inspirations for love of history and the particular way he has of enlivening myths, making them fun to understand and explore. And he's the originator of that phrase you hear every now and then, follow your bliss. The Mystery of the Cathedrals by Fulcanelli. This book I also read on my channel, though this one I read it in full. And I recommend this to all as a way of seeing how the stonemasons commissioned to build all the most famous and grandiose medieval churches and cathedrals in Europe made some additions of their own, which tell the story for those open to understanding it, and there are many who choose to not understand it or even to see it, of the pagan origins of Christianity and the Knights Templars' retrieval of sacred geometry knowledge, how the earth can be measured in a way as to place related sites upon key mathematical points which reveal their connection, but also amazing building knowledge and the fact that ancient pagan myths contain very condensed versions of this fact with varying characters and places. The masterwork of all this is, of course, Notre Dame in Paris, with its uniquely rose-tinted stained glass window. Again, syncretism is the key word, and I suggest this to everyone. Although some knowledge of French and Latin and Greek will certainly help, it is not required, as the meaning of most of his use of words and terms in this language is made pretty clear, save 
for a few Greek phrases. This book about mysteries is itself a mystery. The author disappeared shortly after completion. Initiation into Hermetics by Franz Bardon. This is a perfect summary of what I feel should be at the heart of entry and intention into magic and witchcraft and occult study, rather than, my boyfriend cheated on me and I want to make him pay, so any of y'all got good spells to use? This kind of thing is a faulty foundation, to say the least, and leads to as much danger for yourself as anyone else. As the ancient axiom states, know thyself. When you think on what you seek to achieve, consider it as if already done, and you're looking back on it many years from now. Are you able to step outside of the timely emotional current that swept you up and see the situation from a broader perspective, or is it a matter of revenge where you seek to inflict pain or some other negatively energized action upon someone? Think it through and be thoroughly honest with yourself about the situation and the psychological or spiritual or karmic repercussions that come with all of this. If that was indeed all there was to it, why not instead work to heal yourself and to heal any potential dark energies that have taken hold of someone, if, again, that is indeed the case? My point is that great care must be taken in this work, not just casual impatience seeking revenge or ego-based decision-making. To illustrate this point, let me read you the first paragraph of the introduction. Quote, Anyone who should believe to find in this work nothing else but a collection of recipes with the aid of which he can easily and without any effort attain to honor and glory, riches and power, and aim at the annihilation of his enemies, might be told from the very inception that he will put aside this book being very disappointed. End quote. Now we'll move on to more advanced studies of comparative mythology and history for those who already have a basic understanding of both subjects and their relationship, but in which far more is explored and at a perhaps faster pace, in a way that presumes you already are extremely well read. So the following books I want to suggest to all newcomers to pagan and occult studies and those who are able to break away from the firm grasp of major religions, but which I must acknowledge may be at least a bit intimidating, or indeed too much all at once. And again, for newcomers to this kind of information, or perhaps someone who's simply very young and has not yet had the time to absorb all of the information the following books convey. Saturnalia by Macrobius. This is an ancient Roman work written as a dialogue which serves to give us today the understanding of the feast and celebration of Saturnalia and all it entails. Like a window into the Mediterranean past wherein we can get a series of discussions about history and mythology and what was antiquity to them in the late 4th century. Extremely heavy subject matter, but as I said, a window into how such stuff was discussed at the time and worth owning as a now collectible classic anyway. Genesis, the first book of Revelations by David Wood. This book from 1985 makes me kind of rejoice in my heart. First of all, that it exists at all. Secondly, that I managed to get a copy of it. It's increasingly rare, so track down a copy if, where, when, and how you can. I'm sure almost everyone watching this video is familiar, even if just passingly, with what I call terrestrial tattoos. That is, using geometry to put patterns of sacred sites in place through time. The author is an engineer who is steeped in historical studies and came to know the research of Henry Lincoln, who some of you may remember as that old British gentleman who produced a series of TV broadcasts 
in the 1970s about the Mary Magdalene legends in southern France and the relations of those tales to the observed orbit of the planet Venus. Well, Mr. Wood set out to test the theories put forth and not only found them to be true, but discovered a mouth-watering abundance of elaboration. Among the key traits of Venus's orbit is that it indeed traces a pentagram. And let's just say that that is duplicated upon the ground in southern France, with churches marking the tips of the star. Upon that, there are other stars, other designs, other patterns, some being part of larger ones. If you're going to pay for what is worth repeating, an increasingly rare book of invaluable information that is proven with photographs and diagrams and corroboration, look no further than this gem. I should add that the epilogue of the book strays from anything offering proof and will bemuse many readers, but I can state at least that much emphatically about it, that all is scientifically researched and proven and reproven until the final chapter or epilogue. At that point, I welcome almost anyone's final analysis, being that no matter what it is, it will certainly stray from anything any famed institution will want taught, being that it would end tenures and destroy careers, since it strays from common narratives of what we're expected to believe about what human intelligence is capable of, especially at any time before now. I cannot praise this book enough. On the Mysteries by Iamblichus. Iamblichus, as one may read for themselves in Wikipedia, which actually gets this much right for once, was a Syrian Neoplatonist philosopher of Arab origin. This is another one I will leave a bit mysterious, since it offers his account of being initiated into the mysteries of Isis. I'm going to just leave it at that. And you can find this easily enough online for download. The White Goddess by Robert Graves This is perhaps hardest to describe of all my recommendations. Robert Graves may be the ultimate example of, here it comes again, syncretism. This is one of the most beautiful and lovingly written books I have ever read. It's all wrapped around what the author claims to be in the heart of all myths and the driving force of all heroic endeavors. Human beings motivated and inspired by the universe as goddess. A lonely and hungry sailor at night looking up at the North Star, which is ever above and beyond and ahead, yet also ever hopeful and lighting the way and beckoning us forth to complete our tasks and achieve what at times seems to be the impossible. He uses poetry and stream of consciousness to guide us through history, largely Celtic, and see the great goddess everywhere, inspiring everything. Etymology comes to play a crucial role in all this and whimsically compares words and phrases from varying cultures and myths, taking us back to the language of the birds, which is also the language of the bards. There's too much to say about this entirely unique book, yet I'm also at a loss for words in attempting to do so. It should be readily available for purchase in many editions. A History of Magic and Experimental Science by Lynn Thorndike. This is a giant and daunting work, but satisfying. It's unbelievably immense, and you look at it thinking, Jesus, I hope I can make time for this someday. Well, I'm here to say, please do. I won't say much more about it, but that this was pretty taboo stuff for 1923. This is absolutely top quality scholarship. Truly, the title says it all. 
A History of Magic and Experimental Science. Just look at that title, and then the length of the book, and you'll know whether or not you wish to dive in. The book on the taboo against knowing who you are by Alan Watts. First published, 1966. I've come to think of Alan Watts as a grandfather figure. I never knew either of my grandfathers, and I've come to think of him as one. This book I suggest to all who experience any kind of awakening, and I feel anyone and everyone would get something very profound from reading this. It's going to get you comfortable with getting out of your comfort zone. The Book of Tea by Kakuzo Okakura. This is a very short read, but among my favorites. It's from a Japanese man who's recalling the events all around him while growing up in the late 19th century, watching his country change in almost every regard so very rapidly, like watching his culture die in becoming westernized. His feeling about and during all this are conveyed not with anger, but with a bittersweet resonance with which anyone can relate. Such things force people to adapt and thus learn things about the world and themselves which they never otherwise would. It's something I think newcomers to paganism and occultism and any awakening experiences of any kind can relate to. As the late, great Terence McKenna used to say, find the others. Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, also known as Lao Tse. What the Bible and the Quran do for billions of people, this does for me. Reading these simple lines is like watching a painter mix just two colorless colors upon a canvas, philosophy and spirituality. It is so beautiful, using words to effectively get you to understand what words cannot do. That doesn't make sense, does it? Well, that's the point. Irony and paradox. Sometimes you can best convey what something is by conveying what it is not. Part of my reason for suggesting this here is because I think it's crucial to be peaceful in spirit when embarking upon a new or unfamiliar path, even if you are also filled with passion and rigor. Take them equally in stride with this ancient embodiment of Taoism. Regarding the subject of astrology, this one book will suffice for this video. It is everything you need to know, whether a beginner to astrology or you have an intermediate understanding or whatever. Normally it doesn't sound very good if you suggest something with a load of pictures, depending what it is, I suppose, but here the book is loaded, absolutely loaded with diagrams and images, and that's exactly the study material that you need for this subject. I do strongly suggest gaining at least a basic understanding of astrology if you are learning tarot or want to understand that system. I get it that there are many people who say that that's not so and the readings are complete already without it. I hear you, but it's not complete. Astrology and astrotheology are the foundation of tarot, and you will in fact get even more out of your readings if you know astrology and can apply it. That's nothing against people who don't use it, just saying that you will get so much more. For an extremely old book on the subject with many diagrams and a load of lists and information, though far more condensed and much, much shorter, I would also recommend a book by Al-Biruni called The Book of Instruction in the Elements of the Art of Astrology. Now, there are several authors 
who have written multiple works, which I'd like to suggest to you. So in this case, I'm going to leave you with the author's names, and you can look up, I think with perhaps all of these, if not most of them, you can find some works online, some complete works. In closing, I just want to say read myths, any and all, from every culture. Read them and try to figure out which portions are telling the story of the heavenly bodies, the sun and moon and stars and planets, the Milky Way, and which parts may be actually history mixed in. Perhaps a good romantic spirit to accompany you when so doing is to remember that it was long believed that the legendary city of Troy from Greek mythology was nothing more than just that, a legend. But a guy in 19th century Germany, without any formal training in history or archaeology, discovered it. <laughs>